And I vaguely remember life without pain. As it progresses, as the disease progresses, you lose part of yourself every time another joint is claimed. It's in our fingers and wrists and, and elbows and knees and feet and ankles. Kathy Eichelberger has bravely battled rheumatoid arthritis since she was a teenager. For 40 years, her husband Larry has witnessed the depth of her physical and emotional struggle. When you look at her hands and you can see the, the structural damage that exists in her hands, you can appreciate that structural damage, but you have no idea how that translates into the reality of what she deals with on a day-to-day -day basis. And she doesn't want you to see that. The road that Kathy has traveled with arthritis is a journey that began at a devastatingly young age for now 13-year-old Diamond Carl. The rheumatologist diagnosed her with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. And that was at age five. As a single mother with two young daughters, Vanessa has watched as Diamond painfully deals with her differences and limitations. Well, I'm kind of used to it now, so it doesn't hurt that, that much, but I just can't do it, like all the stuff that them like they can do. From just being that little toddler and just bouncing up and down, <laughs> um, keeping up with everybody else, to slowly, you know, not being able to stand or walk for a very long time. Kathy and Diamond are just two of the over 46 million Americans who suffer from one or more of the various forms of arthritis, over 300,000 of whom are children. Arthritis Foundation-funded researcher, Dr. Lauren Erickson, works daily to better understand the disease in hopes of developing a cure. Arthritis is complex. It's um, got a genetic component to it, an environmental component to it, and of course because it involves the immune system, it's got an immune component to it. Every time I see my rheumatologist, I realize there is no hope, and that it's not going to change, and that it's going to get worse. I envision endpoints in her disease as well, and neither one of us dwells on that. because it's simply something that you can't deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. It doesn't just affect your joints. It affects your heart, and your lungs, your kidneys, your liver. Diamond's form of juvenile arthritis is scleroderma, a condition that causes the skin to get tight and harden, and may also affect internal organs and blood vessels. In fact, at age 11, Diamond experienced multiple life-threatening seizures as a result of restricted blood flow to her kidneys. I don't think I knew it could be this severe. Vanessa's not alone. Unfortunately, most people still don't know that arthritis is a complicated, brutally destructive, and terribly painful disease in which the body's own B cells become the enemy. In the case of autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, B cells often play a very critical pathological role by uh, producing antibodies that target and recognize your own body and destroy it. The bones deteriorate to the point that they disappear. You can slowly see your joints uh -huh. deforming, I guess is the right word. My ankles and my hands and stuff. Toes, wrist, knees, ankles, everything. Children are facing problems and symptoms that an 80-year-old may face, um, and yet they're young and, and they're, they know that they can't do the same things that their peers do. She knows she's different than everybody else. <laughs> it's just really tough. The Arthritis Foundation is the largest private not-for-profit contributor to arthritis research in the world. Over the past 60 years, the Arthritis Foundation has invested over $400 million, allowing researchers like Dr. Erickson to make discoveries that have led to advances in medication. In 45 years, I've gone from two aspirin a day to 11 pills a day and a shot once a week. And I have to do that to be able to maintain walking. 
their whole world revolves around getting up in the morning, taking medication, um, going to the physician. That's what their world revolves around, is, is solely their treatment. So like I would get like therapy like, like every day, so it will get like a little bit better. I've had four surgeries on my knee, two on each one. And I think on my hands, I'm up to eight or nine. Kathy recently underwent surgery on her right hand in an attempt to restore the use of her thumb, the same hand from which her index finger was removed as a result of the extensive deterioration of the bones. There were no bones left in my hand to fix that index finger with. Kathy's doctor told her that she had no choice but to have the finger and part of her hand removed. He said, it was amazing to try to work with the bones in your hand. And he said, I'd describe them as rotten timber on a ship. The destruction Kathy's immune system has wrought on her joint tissue and bones is one of the things arthritis research is working to prevent. There's nothing normal left on my bones. And they'll continue to disintegrate unless and until someone finds that key to turn off the immune system. The distinguishing factor of what we're proposing to do versus what is available out there now is a selective biologic where you only target a component of the immune system that is an underlying cause of disease rather than a general immunosuppressant agent that's going to target the entire immune system. Dr. Erickson is not alone, but part of a vast community of researchers studying arthritis, many of whom got their start as a result of Arthritis Foundation funding. I don't think that any one particular approach is going to be the answer. It's going to have to be a multifaceted approach. Listening to the research that they're trying to work on, it has begun to provide some measure of hope that there might be something out there someday that'll fix it. There's just so many people out there that suffer and shouldn't have to if and when um, the cure is found. Finding the cure means overcoming the issues facing arthritis researchers like Dr. Erickson. It's harder and harder to secure grant support to continue to do what I do. So if, if I can't secure more money, my arthritis research stops. The Arthritis Foundation will continue to invest in research so that people like Diamond and Kathy may one day know a life without pain. Something has just got to happen. One of the things about the Arthritis Foundation is that they invest research dollars in junior investigators that have cutting edge ideas. So they may be a little bit more risky, but they also may hold the promise of a cure. Until that day, everyone involved in the fight finds hope and support by getting involved in the Arthritis Foundation's many programs, advocacy efforts, and fundraising activities. The Arthritis Foundation has provided me with a lot of support a lot of resources, a lot of understanding, and a lot of good cheer. Just getting to learn more and more about arthritis and um, meeting other families, and friends for Diamond to keep in touch with because they all go through the same thing. I think without the interaction with um, the Arthritis Foundation and our local chapter and meeting people, there would be an emptiness to the research. I think becoming friends with people in the foundation, he has a better understanding of what he's doing. A lot of progress is being made, a lot of great ideas out there. There's just not enough money to fund everyone. It's not cured yet, we need a cure. And that's the kind of thing researchers are looking for is a cure. The Arthritis Foundation is committed to helping those affected by arthritis fulfill their dreams. When she was a little bit younger, she used to say, scientist, and um, that she wanted to find a cure, of course, for arthritis. Um, just for it to go away.